Welcome back, welcome back. I apologize for that brief intermission. Not exactly sure what happened there, but you know. Hollywood. Hollywood isn't always what they make it out to be. Too powerful. Just too powerful. It happens sometimes. Hmm. Yes, Twitch couldn't handle goth Hal. Or the talk about rats. Now, forbidden goth boyfriend Hal too strong. <laughs> You might want to actually look into doing that, my friend. Seems you that. might have some female admirers. Or male what? admirers, however you swing. I'll take all admirers, that's fine. <laughs> that's the spirit. That's the spirit. Now I'm here to make people smile. Mm-hmm. Now I can do uh, this too. Speaking of uh smiling, uh you recently got a new model. Tell me about your parents and your outfit. Oh, I did, I did. <laughs> So uh, I have a I have a single dad who who worked on both the art and 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 the and the rigging. He's mm. a, he's a wonderful wonderful dude wonderful dude, and he made me he made me so wiggly. I got I'm also using the forbidden magic of Steve Jobs to like really get some more bounce in my step. <laughs> forbidden Steve Jobs magic, truly yes, powerful. Yes. Had to had to bind his spirit to this this, this strange device called an iPhone 12. It was truly <laughs> cur- truly a cursed object. Powerful, I don't like truly <laughs> powerful stuff. See, in the future, we have something called an iPod. Have you ever heard of it? I do because I am so old that it's our, our, our future and your future and my past kind of connect for a brief moment. So I've, I've that's not how I've that works. A, I, sure, the magic, sure, whatever. Technology, you're, science. you're <laughs> implying that my future is the past. No, 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 no. No. Clearly, I must, I must be bad with dates. That's what that, that's what's going on. That's of that's that's the right way to think about it. That is correct. Okay. Now, you have a little rat friend. I was about to say I have a pair of rat friends. Their names are Black and Tan. Oh. Yes, rats. Rats are very fun pets. I have to keep Henny away from my other pet though, which is a snake. So, <laughs> I, ah, I, yes. I have predator and prey in the same household. How big is your snake? Oh, you're going to ask on the first date? Yes, I am. I am very <laughs> blunt. I am very blunt uh, when it comes to so, pets. So my snake, Nanners, is uh, two and a half feet long. Is that big enough to eat a rat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except she's got a... Uh... She's not good at hunting. I kind of have to like gently bop her in the face with frozen rats, and she eventually eats them. Hmm. She's, she's, very, she's very sweet, but uh, very dumb. Yes. I too am like that sometimes. Sometimes oh, the yeah, people exactly. just have to kind of shove my face into the food in order to get me to eat. But once I'm there, I eat like a beast. Oh, same. I'm a, I'm a hungry, hungry boy at all times. <laughs> yes. So, you're an elf, correct? As far as I know. Why? It's a, it's a deep question. Yeah. Well, it and, is. And, and initially, I thought I was a human because uh, I was. If, if you're familiar with the concept of like the the changeling of, of of a of a creature sort of implanted in a human family, I am familiar. I am uh, one of those. So up until fairly recently, I thought I was uh, just a, just a regular old guy. Until one day, just the, the wizard guild show up. It's like you're an elf, bro. I was like, what? That's not that, that's not how that works. And then here I am now. So that is very strange. So yeah. you've decided to be an elf, or you came out as an elf, or whichever. I just kind of found out I was an elf. Mm. But, uh, good for it's you. Been, it's, been, it's been good so far. People, other than the occasional online joke about elves being sneaky or untrustworthy or knife ears, it's actually pretty good. No, I certainly would never repeat one of those. No. Oh, definitely not. No, you are a paragon of justice, my friend. Of yes. course, you would never say something yes, so I would cruel never about think that way about elves. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be some sort of like cat loving magical girl to have uh, state do comments like that. Yes. Very strange. So, since you filthy knife ears live for like hundreds of millions of years, how old are you? 30. <laughs> you are three. No, 30, 30, 30. 30? I am, a, yes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm what you call a hag, I guess, in human terms. Mm. But, uh, I'm very young as far as elves go. Mm. Yes, very young. In fact, you might be too young to be on this show. I'm fairly sure the legal drinking age for elves is 100. Maybe if you have classified guild information, I might have to, I might have to call them up after this. You might end up in a van somewhere. I'm sorry. 
Hmm. Hmm. Potentially. I might have to talk to Twitch. Because I'm pretty sure you have to be over 13 to have a Twitch account as well, don't you? Hal? I'm so... Sir D. Third, there's a three and a zero, my dude. Yes, but are you 30 in human years? It's, it's, I'm 30 in human years. It's, it's, it's not like a dog year conversion thing. <laughs> are you sure it's not a dog year conversion thing? Living never on. mind, never mind. <laughs> so, as an elf, aside from Lemboss bread, what kind of food do you like to eat? I like burgers. Burgers. I like burgers and a good cheese. I'm a very human elf. You'll find out that I'm not like prancing in the majestic meadows or uh, living in trees or practicing archery. Ah, I'm just, I'm just, a, just, a, just a guy with pointy ears, and I, I paint figures while while people watch me and call me cute. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good ah, gig. I like it. Yes. Tell me about these miniatures of yours. Oh yes. Oh oh boy. How do you have an hour and a half books? Because I can go on. I uh, do. I'm, yeah, let's go. So I paint a lot of Warhammer models, uh, Skaven in particular, lots of anything Nurgle, whether it's fantasy or 40k, a uh, couple of miscellaneous. Weirdly enough, I don't actually have like an elf army. I have a, I have some dwarves. I don't have any elves. Really. That's because elves are very lame. Indeed, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good so do you do it. you actually play 40k? No, I not really. No, I used to play a war game called War. Uh, War Machine, like way back in the day. Ah, uh, I know uh, War Machine very well, my friend. Yeah, I was a I was a Legion of Everblight player, but then when I moved, uh, I moved states, so I really ran out of someone to play games with, and then the scene kind of died where I was at. So I was sort of a, a dormant mini painter player for a while, mm. and then now I've been sort of getting back into uh, from things from the Warhammer side. Hmm. So, what is your game of choice, my friend, in terms of all of the? Uh nerdy uh western rpgs and such oh okay if we're talking miniature war game i love malifo is my favorite it's like a kind of cowboy fantasy western uh miniature skirmish game where instead of using dice use playing cards which that is a very, is a very cool idea and then when it comes just to role-playing games in general, Blades in the Dark is my favorite. It's about, like, fantasy gangs kind of struggling in, like, a, a cold, dark uh, uh, city. So Blade... you can be groups of assassins or smugglers or drug pushers. It's very fun. You said Blades in the Dark? Yep. Is this, I'll, I'll say is this it's, a real it's... game? Yes, fun fact. Hey, everybody in the crowd, there's other games than Dungeons & Dragons. I want you to know that. I've never heard of those. Oh. I don't. I don't know. I've. 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 I've heard. I've heard word on the grapevine that you might be part of the fellow uh, fifth edition D and D sucks crowd. <laughs> oh, my friend. Uh, I believe fifth edition is a fine edition of D and D up until level eleven. That's fair. That's the systems aren't pl are really play tested. Mm -hmm. After like level six, let's be real. Mm -hmm. they, they, they they don't hold together very well. Yeah, no. fifth edition, I I joke fifth edition's fine, but it doesn't excite me like other games do. No, it stops being exciting at level 11. Mm -hmm. That's that. So I, I came up with a system I call Epic 11 based on the Epic 6 of 3.5 fame. Oh, I remember Epic 6. Good times. Mm -hmm. Good times. Epic 6 was fun. So the idea of Epic 11 is you get to level 11 and then you get feats and stats every level, but you don't get anything else. That's a good way to cap it out. Like well, it's, the, it's, the problem it's, it's is, is that feats in 5e are very strong or very useless. A lot of it is just pure flavor. So you kind of have to balance them out. Usually have to, too. <laughs> no, we're not talking about feet. I do got... That's one fun thing about this new model. I do have feet, finally. I, I, I lost them in a workplace accident. Oh, but I got uh, cadets, do we want to see Hal's feet? I'm going to need to see some needles <laughs> in the chat. Power Nelson Neals to see Hal's feet. Come on, oh, chat. Can we do oh, it? Christ. Cadets, channel your energy to see these feet. There's Maybe this one. Was a mistake. Maybe this was a mistake. It was entirely a mistake. Oh. All right, Look. let's go. All right. All right. Guru Kumawadu. You did do this to yourself. Guru 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 Uh, You missed. There we go. Okay, there we go. You guys seeing that okay? 
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Of course I'm a tease. I'm a fucking elf. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so, Carvbide. Huh? Oh, sorry, I said Carvbide. I, I saw yes. his name and I, I meant to say Hal. I'm sorry. I, I, I understand. I, when he got uh, vaporized by the nuke, I could still like feel the particles of him in the air. Yes, he was still truly with us in our it's hearts. Like he's all, and, and like embedded on the desk and the TV monitor and a little bit sprinkled throughout chat. And oh God, it's in my nose. <laughs> Literally vaporized in your air. You're breathing Carvbide right now. Yeah. Gross. Now, since we were talking about D and D, why don't you tell me your stat distribution? Oh, oh God, let me let me let me get out my let me get out my my, my guild card. I mean, yeah, hold <laughs> yes, on, hold on. get out the uh, get out the Pathfinder Society card. I, Let's see it. I, I have to. Oh, don't you dare speak Pathfinder in here. No, <laughs> I'm okay with Pathfinder. I've 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 played it a lot. Have you played, played... two point yet? I yes, it's. Hmm. How can I say it? The core systems are fine, but I've never seen a more boring, uh, like, mediocre style character leveling system in my entire life. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Mundo Chemical Romance, thank you for your subscription. You are keeping the future bright. All right, so, so since I don't, I don't have the ability to dig it out right this red hot minute, I'm going to say uh, low strength. Pretty good decks. Uh, okay, con. Uh, I'm never going to give hard and fast numbers, of course, because uh, because enough never really tells. Mm. Uh, I'd like to, I'd like to think high charisma, but people can debate me on that. Uh, I uh, I have a pretty decent intelligence until I turn on OBS and then I get the debuff like everyone else. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say low wisdom. Let's be real. Let's say low wisdom. <laughs> mm, agreed. I'm, I'm I have, I have twenties across the board. Oh, okay, okay. I so am a how, superhero. How, how many how many fives did you slip your GM? Um, I don't I don't you need to slip them fives. I slip them this dick. Oh. Mm-hmm. Nothing establishes player superiority than impregnating your DM. Oh, true. Is that a heroic thing to do? Ask my 20 strength if that's a heroic thing to do. No. <laughs> I will pass. <laughs> so, out of all the 3.5 splat books you have, which one is your favorite? Oh, I got this one right off the holster. Magic of Incarnum, baby. Let's go. And what is in Magic of Incarnum? Tell me about oh, your God. spell book. Oh. We're going to go deep into the nerd well. Okay, so third edition D&D, first of all, is D&D from back like tw like 2001 to like 2009. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some other splits off. Uh, Magic of Incarnum was a fun system, uh, it's like subsystem, where you could bind the souls of uh, dead people or dead animals to your body to get special effects, like the ability to like shoot acid or swim fast or grow wings or get like a cool angelic little familiar that would shoot lasers. It was a very cool, very, very well balanced, considering the uh, early third edition was not. Mm -hmm. It was not balanced Agreed. At all. And uh, yeah, Totemist, if you ever run 3.5 uh, D&D, cut Druid, put in Totemist. You'll have a better time. Cut Druid, put in Totemist. I always thought Druid was pretty good in 3.5. No, that's the problem. It's too fucking good. It, it, mm, the, 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 issue, the, the, the issue was that someone's like, I want to play a fighter. I want to have a sword. I want to have a shield. Cool. All right. That's a valid character concept. And then your friend's like, oh, oh, Druid. I can have a pet bear. I like having a pet bear. Oh, I could use magic to summon bears. Oh, I can transform into a bear, too. And then by themselves, they invalidate, like, half the party just because mm. they thought bears were cool. Agreed. That's, that's do, you remember, do you remember the D&D 4th edition donkey army trick? Oh, no, I don't. I don't remember. I remember, like, Peasant Railgun and... Peasant like, Railgun. A couple and, uh, of other ones. I don't remember the donkey army trick, no. So donkey army uh, required you to... Uh, so you took one level of wizard. You got a spell mm. book which you could then sell for 300 gold. Mm. Next level, you became a druid, and you used all of your gold to buy donkeys. 
of which each one was five silver. Ah, okay. I, I see where this is going. And then you could control each of those donkeys on your turn due to the druid mechanics in 4e. Yeah, there's, there's always funny stuff with buying animals because they're always like super cheap because they're like, <laughs> yes. clearly, you have, if you have 3,000 gold, you're going to buy a plus one sword. You can also just hire an army mm -hmm. like straight up. Remember that action economy, kids. It's very important. Yeah. A thousand level one fighters will still crit often enough to kill most things. <laughs> yes. Most DMs will dissuade you from buying armies, though. It's a uh, shame. In that, in that case, does it go back to the, the old Nelson adage of just impregnate your DM instead? Yes, <laughs> it does. It does. It works. So how, it how works much, very how much, well. How much child support are you paying recently? None. The secret to impregnating your DM is to make sure you do it well enough that they can't even ask you for money. Ah, I, I, I see. Mm -hmm. Truly, I have much to learn about superheroes. Now, <laughs> what do you think about post-apocalyptic scenarios? Oh, I like them, actually. I Do you now? I'm going, I'm going to be running a post-apocalyptic role-playing game next Saturday, actually. Fun you should mention that. How do you like to exist in a post-apocalyptic scenario now? Oh, I know, I know where this is going. Oh, do you now? Because it's coming. Five. Well, everybody. Four. Three. Two. One. I can't believe Halbernacht is dead. Cadets, F's in chat and salutes for a fallen warrior. A warrior most powerful. Halbernacht. Oh, he's in the chat. Ugh, once again, I need to figure out. These nukes just aren't working. I swear, I, you know, I go outside, I check the nuke list and it just works, whatever. Anyway, we will be back in just a little bit with our final song and our goodbyes. And after that, the post-Power Nelson Power Hour Zatsudan. Please be there.